Hey everyone, I thought I'd start showing you some of the other chairs that I do. So um, this one came in the other day and it's a pressed seat. So what has to happen is all along the perimeter of this chair seat is what I call spline and it is glued in place. This seat, which has a hole right there, comes, this material comes in one big roll and I cut what I need to replace a bad seat. First though, I have to get the old seat out and that involves heating up um, white distilled vinegar and then using a brush and laying in the vinegar. I heat the vinegar and lay it into the groove to dissolve the glue. And it's a long process. And then there's this little tool. It's an awl type of a tool and it, it goes in underneath the spline. And once the glue is dissolved, I'm able to lift the spline out. You'll be getting to see this as I proceed. So this is just showing you what it looks like now. And I just, you know, started attacking that a little bit um, with a knife to see how loose it was. I hope y'all are seeing this and the noise isn't <laughs> too much on the hammering. So I'll just move you a little closer. You can see the spline and it fits into that little groove there and the seat material is pressed in underneath there. So um, I've got more soaking as I go around the bend here and come back to where I started shredding. Hey everybody, welcome back. So this is the next uh, part of this chair video. And as you can see, I've got the seat out. Um, it's the vinegar uh, where it was wet um, has dried overnight. So now what I'm doing is taking sandpaper and just cleaning out the groove all the way around and then I just use my little whisk broom and sweep sweep out the dust. The other thing that's important to do if you have um, one of these chairs is this edge right here, um, many times, now this seat, that was not the case. This seat, if you remember, the hole was kind of in the center and oh, probably some feller with a big old honking wallet sat down in this thing and <laughs> busted it out, It's my guess. Anyway, the... Uh, this edge though sometimes um, is where a seat will break and it's because the edge on this part of the chair frame is sharp. And so if you know I'm given the opportunity to put a new seat in, I would like it to last for a really, really long time. And so what I do is I take a file and I just round off that inner edge because the seat itself will be, you'll see in the, in the next part, um, it gets pressed into this little groove and then it's taut. Um, it's really, really tight 
across it's because you want it to be firm for people to sit on it but the pressure against this edge can you know as somebody's bottom is in it and it pushes it down that's the that's the place um that many times it will break so anyway i'm gonna go all the way around the perimeter of this with the file file that off and then you'll see what happens next okay so um here we are in the sink and i've got um the spline that's gonna go into the chair soaking in just some slightly warm water and i'm gonna dry it off and the whole purpose of this is i'm going to press the spline into the seat into that groove and then it's going to dry in place and then I will take it out when I'm ready to actually put the seat material in. So come on over here, I'll set you up and hopefully you'll be able to see this. The, um, you can see the shape of that. There's a thinner side and a wider side and the thinner side goes down. you can see some of this. That groove is really showing up. There we go. Okay, so you can see now the spline is in, it goes all the way around. It will dry in place. Now I've got a little bit of an overlap here at the back and that's gonna stay that way until I actually put the seat material in and then I will know where to trim that. So then we are on to the next step. Okay, so this is the roll of pre-woven cane material. I have just cut a piece which will be sufficiently big enough to cover this seat area. It's gonna be two inches wider all the way around and I'm gonna go set it in the tub to soak and then you'll see what happens next. Hey everyone, <laughs> I believe I figured out how to film this. Um, <laughs> so on the counter, which you can't see, but I will show you. Um, I have wedges, I have my hammer, I have a brush to spread glue, I have small pieces of spline that I've cut which will go into the groove to hold the material in place until I'm ready to put the big piece of spline that you saw, which is right here, and has now taken the shape of the chair seat. And I have glue and I have my razor knife. Okay, um, so I'm going to go get the seat material and we will get started. Hey, here we are. This cane material has been soaking probably for about five hours. If you watched the other video I did on the splint seat, I talked about a material, cane material, that's called porch weave. It's the exact same material as this. That was just cut wider. This also has a slick side and a matte side, if you will, um, a, a non inner side of the cane material. So we want the slick side up because that's the side that's going to take the wear. Now this seat has an odd shape to it, so um, there's gonna be some different trimming than there would be um, with say just a square seat or a round chair seat replacement. I'm needing to get 
this is the groove that I'm going to press this into. So I need a little bit of a material overage beyond that so that as it's pressed in, the material can sink in. And I need it to be lined up both vertically and horizontally with the front edge of the chair frame and the sides of the chair frame. Now here in the back, um, you can see there's, a, there's an angle. So that's the unusual part that's gonna get trimmed a little bit differently. But I don't wanna do that until I'm sure that where I've placed the cane material is going to be appropriate so that I can trim that off easily and still have my correct amount of overage once I get back there. So you will see um, how this is progressing. So yeah, the, the lineup <laughs> takes a little bit just to make, make everything as, as tightly lined up to the sides as possible. Okay, so when you first get a, um, a pack of these, uh, wedges, they have a really sharp edge on them. And so you can trim that. This would actually cut the cane if I just hammered that in. So I don't want that. I want, I want one that I've used where the edge of this is already softer and rounded as I'm going to be, you know, <laughs> using the hammer and pressing this in. And that means we don't want to break the cane. We want to just flex it into the groove and have it, have it stay where, where it needs to stay. place in my first cut piece of spline to hold this front edge in place as I begin to tack down the sides um, and across from it here in the back. Now this back groove is really close to the back of the chair seat so that's a important thing to note um, as it's getting pressed in. And you can see as I did that, the, the slight little bubble is already smoothing itself out. Again, I'm going to take um, one of the spline pieces that I cut and I'm going to press it in there so that it's gonna hold the back part in place as we go around the perimeter of the chair seat. All right, now I'm going to proceed to go to the edges of the groove on the sides of the chair. And what I'm noticing is that the tension of the seat and the tension of the overage is a bit too much. So I can do a couple of things. I can slide out some of these pieces to help alleviate some of the tension um, on the overage part so that the as it's pressing in to the groove, um, it's a little easier. Get a hold of that there. There, that's gonna be better. 
and we're also working around arms and stuff, which <laughs> makes it interesting. Okay, now I'm going to come here onto this side, and again, I'm checking to make sure I've got, you know, got a good lineup, and then I can see exactly where the, the groove is. my temporary piece in place. Now, what I want to do is start working around from where I started, going out to where those spline pieces are in place, and then I'm going to be able to tell back here what I can trim off to make that press in easily, and if I can take out some of these little corner pieces to make these corners go in easier. So, here we go. Now that I've got this corner piece in, I can slide out um, a few of these side um, angle pieces and it will, again, it's going to relieve some of the tension placed on this so that the material can sink in to the groove without too much pressure holding it uh, and making it more to pop back out. I can take this one out too. Ah, the supervisor has arrived. It's raining outside, so I figured he'd be in here pretty soon to help. I've been doing this for a lot of years, so some of the stuff I just do intuitively now to really explain it, but as you're approaching a corner, you stop at a certain point and then come at it from the other side in order to allow it to slide in easier. And I can feel, again, the same situation. This is tugging a little bit, so I'm going to just relieve some of the tension by taking out those outer strands and then I can keep pressing the cane into the groove. Okay, so now I'm going to move towards the back, and this is where I'm going to have to do some trimming um, because the tension from those angles will be too much for uh, the cane material to easily go in to the grooves. So that's where, that's where the tension starts. So now I'm going to trim about... I can always take more out. So I don't want to trim too much initially. Get that out of the way. 
and then I can slide out some of these pieces like I did along the sides. Just allow those to come out. I can trim a little bit more this way. And don't worry about all the little piece things that fly out. You can just, just clean up later. It's not an issue. They're easy to find. Okay, so there's still a little bit too much tension, so I'm gonna slide out another one. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back over the parts that I did earlier because the tension was too much and it was causing the seat material to pop out of the groove on, on the edge there. Okay, so now I've got one of the angles done. This way. And again, I'm going to have to trim, trim down this triangular piece. Now that's this particular chair. If you were doing a square seat, you would still have angles to cut, but it wouldn't be, it would be in reference to the shape of the chair seat. Take that off. Slide out. That's gonna go, that's gonna go better. And again, coming to the turn from both sides, working it in a little bit at a time. That's that back corner. There's also some, some tension back here along, along this piece, so I'm gonna slide some of these out as well. There we go. All right. And then I need to tack that back in because the pressure is popping it out of the groove. Okay, so I've been all the way around, pressing it into the groove. I've allowed these little side pieces to hold it in place, but I can take those out now. And they just pop out pretty easily. If they don't, you can always use a point of a scissor to grab it. All right, so now, again, I'm going to go completely around the chair, tacking, tacking this down into the groove, working it all the way around to really make sure it's pressed down in there before I put the glue on it. The cat doesn't like the hammering. <laughs> But he is checking on me to make sure I'm doing a good job. So I appreciate his company. You may not be able to see it from your vantage point, but um, it is sinking in further. Um, 
into the groove. And I always think about um, my friend Alice, who taught me to do this. Um, she knew me before I was born, actually. Um, she was friends with my parents, and um, she had a little farm on the other side of the valley from where I grew up. And um, she had chickens and raspberries, and um, my dad and I would go there every week and, and buy eggs from her and I loved hanging out and exploring her farm and she had you know barn kittens and sheep and um, just a great great place for a kid to hang out and explore and after um, after high school I saw she was giving a class um, to learn how to cane chairs and I took the class and she remembered me from when I was a little kid coming to, to her farm uh, with my dad and she saw I was catching on really quick and she said if you have time um, just come she said I've got so many chairs and by that point she was already in her 70s um, she said I've got so many chairs I could use some help and you're doing this really good so in between um, working um, and saving up for college, um, if I had a day off or whatever, I, I would just go hang out with Alice. And so that's how I learned to do this. And that took place over the course of seven years. Um, and I didn't realize I was apprenticing with her. I was just enjoying hanging out with her and hearing her stories. And um, she had a great, Oh my gosh, wood cook stove in her kitchen. I just, oh, good, oh, ooh, if I could have that now, that'd be great. Um, I have a little wood cook stove. Um, she had uh, a spring that you had to haul water from. Um, no indoor plumbing, actually. Um, she had an outhouse. And, uh, yep, just part of Appalachia. Anyway, I am so grateful to her. And whenever I do one of these, um, I think about her. And the gift she bestowed on me, um, asking me to come and help her cane chairs. So we are set now. That is pressed in. I've taken the tension off on the edges. And what I'm going to do now is get some Elmer's Carpenter's wood glue. And make sure that that's breathing here. Let's see. Yeah, it's open. Okay. So we're going to start um spreading it into the groove there it comes just gonna lay a track all the way around it's not coming out very fast So you want a good, um, a good amount. If it gets unstuck, don't worry. This, whilst it's wet, it's um, water soluble. So um, if it gets on anything, it can be sponged off. Not, not an issue. really get it down into that groove.
to my cat. Actually, my cat says there's my human. <laughs> you don't actually ever have a cat as a pet. You're there. And that's right. I'm part of their, their staff. No, you cannot get up here. I'm sorry. No, you cannot. Okay. So I've gone all the way around with the glue. Put, laid it in there pretty heavy. It's gonna, it'll sink in as I put the spline in. Those little drops there are not an issue. I'm gonna just rinse this off. Okay, so now, now we're ready to put in the spline that was dried and pre-shaped um, to make this part really easy. Now, there are some chairs where you would put it, um, you would put four separate pieces in, um, but in this case, um, because of the shape of the chair um, and to replicate what was originally in this chair, using one piece is, um, is what I needed to do. Now, the same way, working, working out in both directions, you start getting this to sink in. And I'm using one of the wedges now that has a much, I don't know if you can see this, the difference. This edge is thinner and this one's been flattened out even more from lots of tapping. So that's the one I want to use because I, I want to get the spline into the groove, but I do not want to damage the spline. And the, the wedge can also be used um, sideways like that for a bigger surface once you start getting the spline in. Okay, now, if you remember earlier um, in the video, huh, this is a really long video, my apologies. <laughs> For those of you who are bored, um, this is what it takes. Okay, so now I've got um, the little razor knife part out. I want you to cut this so that it's going to meet in a nice way. I'm going to take one of my thinner wedges and put that underneath and line these up side by side. In there.
So now I'm, I'm just going to keep going around tapping this. Um, so I'm going to shorten the video here by editing out me going around and around with this, but that's all, that's all it's going to be. I'm just going to keep doing this, going around to make sure that the spline is really pressed in. So um, that's what I'm doing, and then we'll jump to the next part. Okay, so now I'm cutting the excess material from around the outside of the spline. Okay, so now I'm just going to, yeah, that's right, <laughs> I'm just going to take a, uh, a damp cloth and wipe any of the glue that I see stuck to the chair itself. Um, I mean, it dries, dries clear, but I don't want it on the, on the, on the chair. And I also want to look and make sure if I got any anywhere else in my exuberance <laughs> that I get that wiped off so that it doesn't show up. And okay, so that that is it for the moment. This this is going to have to dry now overnight, um, and then I will be showing you. Um, the next thing, which is again to just go around the perimeter with a blade and make sure that there's no little spiky edges sticking up. 
this is the way I was taught to do it. Um, thanks for joining me in this little adventure, <laughs> and I'll see you in the next part. Good morning, y'all. Uh, or Well, it's morning here. I have been going around the perimeter of the seat, as I mentioned, feeling and looking for places where the cane material would be sticking up, including on the seat. And if I'm feeling anything that you know feels a little spiky, <laughs> I'm just taking my clippers and clipping those things off. What I didn't mention uh, about cane material, whether it's this pressed material or loose strands, which I'm going to, I'm going to film some more chairs. So you'll get to see some of the other things I do. This material can be purchased in bleached or unbleached. In this instance, I chose the unbleached. Now it's still not as dark as what's been aged. I did not want to stain this and I talked to the chair client about the pros and cons of staining the chair material. This is a natural material. It, it expands and contracts with moisture and heat and over time this seat will achieve the same patina color um, that the older part of the cane material has. However, probably can see that the spline itself is a little bit lighter in color than the seat material and because of that I am going to go around the perimeter I'm going to go around on the spline and just with a paintbrush I am going to apply and wipe off a wood stain and I'm using um, provincial um, so it's fairly fairly close in color to this um, and it's going to help the overall appearance of the spline blend into the color of the seat and you'll see um, if I wait a few minutes and then I wipe that off it's gonna it blends it in better and it's not so the spline also will age in time, but this just this just helps it be a little bit more um, blended in. So yeah, so I'm liking the looks of that. Anyway, I um, will post the supply places that I order from in order to facilitate anybody who might like to try this. Um, you need patience and it takes time and it's so satisfying at the end of a few days to see a beautiful chair back, back to be able to be enjoyed. And um, yeah, so I won't return this to the client for a few days. I wanna make sure that any of the um, wood stain, you can see that, yeah. Um, any of the wood stain smell off gas stuff is gone so that they will feel comfortable sitting on the chair. So thanks so much for joining me and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye for now.